Okay, so this is what we got up to in the last video. Um, so we would drawn out our angles here. That's what they actually looked like. Um, right, so looking at that now, there's this um, sort of pattern to it where it's like a we've got pi or like 0 plus pi on 8, and then we've got pi on 2 plus pi on 8, and then we've got pi plus pi on 8, and then we've got 3 pi on 2 plus pi on 8. Um, it's just adding pi on 8 onto each of the different parts of it. So to come up with the general solution there, I could say that x is equal to pi n on 2, so some multiple of pi on 2, plus the angle pi on 8. And I think that will pretty much do for that one. Um, something I will say about these questions, so this one and even the last one, is if you look in the book you're probably going to get answers which are wildly different uh, to the ones that you have in the back of the book. You could be asked to express this in a certain way, but um, usually I would just leave the answer like this. There's no need to actually take it any further than that. And doing so would be considered extra engagement, and that's something which is strongly discouraged by uh, the examiners. So, look, I, I will show you a way to get around that as well uh, if you are unsure about whether your answer is the same as what you see in the back of the book. So we'll see how that works in just a few minutes' time. Um, in this question here, we'll go through the same process as we always have, so I'm going to add root 3 to both sides, and then I'm going to divide by 2. Okay, so for sine to be equal to root 3 on 2, uh, that means that our basic angle would have to be pi on 3. So I can say x equals pi on 3. Or sine is also positive in the second quadrant, so that would be 2 pi on 3. And then if we go around the circle again, uh, we would have 7 pi on 3 and 8 pi on 3. So looking at what this actually looks like, that's up there and up there. The angle in here is pi on 3, and the angle in here is also pi on 3. So, this is um, <clears throat> quite an interesting general solution. The general solution to sine functions always has two distinct solutions, uh, whereas the others can be written as a single equation. I also did forget on this equation here to write that n is an element of z. So n is an element of the integers. Anyway, back to this question here. Um, right, I'm going to say that x is equal to, so we want to have even numbers of pi plus pi on 3. So to get an even number of pi, to make any number even, we can just double it. And whenever you double it, it makes it even. There's no way that we can double a whole number and make it odd. So I'm just going to have 2 pi n plus pi on 3. And this is the fun part. So, um, to make a number odd, okay, we made it even here by doubling it. To make it odd and ensure that it's odd every single time, we can double it and then add on 1. Because as soon as we add on 1 to it, then, uh, well, yeah, it's going to be odd again. So, I'm going to express this as 2n plus 1 pi. Okay, this 2n plus 1 makes it odd. And then that gives us the odd numbers of pi, which are out in this part over here. And then we're just taking away pi on 3 from that. So minus pi on 3. And I should say where n is an element of z. Or n is an element of the integers. And there we have it. So that's three different problems solved and uh, you know, getting the general solution for them. I will now go over how to do it on the calculator. Um, and follow it up with checking your answers. Okay, so just move on from here.